Okay, to, to review what you should remember about projections, but it's been a couple of months. We did it in two by two, okay? In R2. What have you got here? You've got a right triangle. Got an angle here. Okay? And what you've got then is a right triangle where you have the magnitude of V2 here, right? And you have theta here, right angle. So this side is magnitude of V2 cosine theta. Okay? Well, cosine theta is V1 dot V2 divided by the magnitude of V1 times the magnitude of V2. So the projection is magnitude of V2 times V1 dot V2 over magnitude of V1 times the magnitude of V2, right? Which is just the magnitude of V2 times, sorry, which is just, uh, you know, magnitude of V2 divides out. And we have this. All very easy to calculate. Okay? And the projection, the vector projection, which is what we're really after, we've got to have a vector. This is just the scalar projection, right? And you, again, review what you know about that. Um, but the vector projection of, of V2 onto V1 then is the scalar projection times the unit vector V1 over magnitude of V1 which is a unit vector in the direction of V1. So whatever scalar projection is, you multiply it by the unit vector in the direction of V1, and you have the vector projection, which is what you need in order to do this process. These are all vector projections. So that's a quick review, but that's something that hopefully get this. Now, as I told you when we first looked at this, and, and at first we were only doing it in R2, but I said it extends to any dimension, right? Now we've got a magnitude of V1 in the denominator and another magnitude of V1 in the denominator. So everybody wants to write that as magnitude of V1 squared. And that's not incorrect, but that's how you calculate it without understanding what it means. What it means is scalar projection times unit vector. And I prefer writing it like this rather than going to a calculation scheme that obscures this, at least until you're sure that you understand what it means. Okay? So I object to that formula, but not too strongly because it's correct. It's a great calculation scheme, but if you're calculating without understanding, you could do better. Now, if all you can do is calculate without understanding, it's still, you can get by. But you're going to hit a wall eventually. Okay? So understand everything you can at every stage.
to the extent that you can within constraints of life, time, and mental acuity, okay? Because those are all limiting factors, and I, I certainly have mine, too, uh, right? One reason I got as far as I did was because I always went with understanding. And people who outperformed me when we were able to get by doing calculations fell by the wayside in graduate school. So I kind of have direct experience of that phenomenon, but with a limited sample. So I'm not sure how general it is. But still, take my word for what you think it might be worth. Um, okay. Uh, so let's calculate it. Remember, we have. Your basis two zero zero one one zero one two one, if I remember correctly, and if not, we'll use this anyway. Okay? So you start with the first. Start with V1, and actually we'll start with V2. Start with the component, uh, subtract the component in the direction let's say this. W's are going to be our new vectors, our orthogonal basis vectors, okay? And you get that, you let W1 equal V1, start with W2 and subtract the component in the direction of each previous W, right? Using the projection. The component is the projection, the component you're subtracting is the projection, right? <coughs> 